So when it comes to stopping someone, the late Paul Gomez uh, said something that stuck in my mind on a YouTube video. I'll link it down below. Um, but anyway, like 10 years ago, whatever, I, on YouTube he said this, that the only two ways to stop someone 100% are to disrupt violently their central nervous system. So you sever the connection between their brain and the rest of the body. You sever the spinal cord. You sever the brain stem. You, you destroy the brain matter, whatever. Um, you're able to disrupt that or sever that connection in some way that they're unable to communicate to their limbs what to do. Um, and then the second way you can stop someone is by uh, blood loss. You create a blood pressure drop to the point that they become unconscious. This may or may not be lethal. Uh, it's lethal after some period of time. But central nervous system stuff, once it's severed, it's gone. Uh, when it comes to blood loss, it can take some amount of time for things to kind of shut down. Those are the only two ways to definitively stop someone who is trying to hurt you. The other way that is less um, reliable is by a psychological stop. You scare someone and they choose to leave. You can do this by bluffing. You can say, I've got a gun, I called the police. Meanwhile, you're in your bedroom, you don't have a gun, you haven't called the police because you're a knucklehead and you're not armed and you left your phone outside of your bedroom, but they're knocking on the door of your bedroom, whatever. You bluff and they say, you know what, I don't want this trouble, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna walk away. That's not reliable. Another example of a psychological stop is what Joe Biden recommends, which is to, uh, someone's coming up to your house and you walk onto your porch with your double barrel shotgun and you blast two rounds into the air, emptying your double barrel shotgun, and the person chooses to leave, to vacate the area. That's a psychological stop. You could also do something like shoot someone in the gut and it hurts. They're not stopped. They can, they can still fight you if they want, but they say, I'm not going to mess with this or, oh crap, I've just been shot. And then they, they leave. Those are the only ways that you can stop someone who's trying to hurt you. Article 1, Section 15 of the Connecticut State Constitution says... But you can bear arms in defense of yourself. Your, your personal ability to bear arms is a constitutionally protected right, both in the American Constitution, Second Amendment, and more explicitly in the Connecticut State Constitution. Now, lawmakers have gone so far as to recently pass the third of many um, bans or, or legislation regarding gun ownership. Uh, the third was HB 6667, which has passed and has now closed the loophole on Connecticut other firearms, which is was previously our only way to own many types of semi-automatic firearms, the most common of which is an AR-15 type Connecticut other. Um, you could also pick up an FN SCAR or whatever, and as long as you configure it in a certain way without a stock, with a hand grip, with a overall length of greater than 26 inches, I believe. Um, as long as you configured it in a certain way, it, it fell into this gray area of an other firearm that was not a um, rifle, pistol, or shotgun going through a tunnel. But anyway, it would fall into this legal gray area. That was kind of cool. You could still own it. Um, my Connecticut other is a 12 and a half inch barreled AR-15, and uh, I love it. it it's, a, it's a great gun. Uh, carving length gas system. I kind of wish it was mid-length, but I couldn't find that in 12 and a half inch barreled. And uh, just works great. I have other AR-15s that are rifles that are listed as assault weapons, and I'm allowed to own them because I registered them but I'm no longer able to transfer them. And my current Connecticut other, I can no longer transfer. The problem is every other person in Connecticut from this day forward, or from yesterday forward, 
who wants to buy the most effective weapon for self-defense is barred from a huge category of firearms. You're barred from the AR-15s, the, se the semi-automatic rifles or carbines or other firearms because those are now legally unacceptable. Why are they unacceptable in the state of Connecticut? Um, according to the Constitution, owning guns in defense of yourself is legal. If we want to be effective in defending ourselves, we need to be effective in more than psychological stops. If someone's on drugs, psychological stops don't work very well. If someone is really determined to hurt you, psychological stops don't work very well. There's this story of um, Native Americans who were shot by um, colonists who had firearms and Native Americans did not really understand, I don't know how true this is, but did not really understand how firearms worked. So they got like stung by a bee by their perspective and it's like, oh, this sucks. I'm bleeding a little bit, but whatever. And they just kept fighting because they didn't realize with this like shock factor, this, I mean, shock is a, is a physiological condition, uh, but they didn't start going into shock because they didn't realize how bad of a situation this was. Um, you can go into shock without realizing how bad of a situation you're in. But anyway, that's beside the point. They weren't psychologically affected by firearms the way that, um, you know, we can be. Likewise, if you're on uh, psychiatric um, medication, if you're on medication that alters your brain psychology, the way that you think, you, uh, you know, hopped up on cocaine Scarface style, you may not be as affected by gunshots. Psychologically speaking, you have to hit someone in the blood, in the blood, in the heart or the aorta, um, or the brain, if you want to stop them in a minute, you know, within, within the course of a minute. Uh, ask any hunter, you can blow out an animal's heart, and they're still able to run for some time, for some number of steps. If someone's charging at you with a knife or a bat or a firearm, you know, someone's trying to shoot at you and you blow out their heart, well, that sucks, you know, for them because they are going to die. They're a dead person walking, dead man walking. But at a certain point, it don't matter if they're shooting back at you for another 30 seconds or still able to fire off random bullets into a crowd or whatever. So the reason I'm saying this is it is going against the philosophy that made Connecticut's Article 1, Section 15 of the Connecticut State Constitution and the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution saying that only certain guns are allowed to be had. Where, what can we do, though? Well, we can contact our senators and representatives and say, uh, screw you guys, I have the right, according to these laws, to purchase these firearms, and I'm going to sue you, or, I mean, don't do this individually, get with a group like FPC, GOA, whatever, get with one of those awesome gun groups. Um, in Connecticut, the Connecticut Citizens Defense League is an awesome group as well. Join up with those groups, support them, see what legislative action they're doing. Um, they're, they're on top of it, but support them however you can. Uh, I'm not telling you throw money at them. Look it up. Um, what you can also do is you can get really good with firearms that are still legal in the state of Connecticut. I don't want that to sound like surrendering because it's not. But in the meantime, that things are illegal in Connecticut. And trust me, they've been escalating. Um, they've been pushing the wall of what is illegal since 1993 or 4, whenever the Connecticut law went into effect. They've been pushing that more and more and more. I moved into Connecticut uh, in the early 2000s and... I was already under certain 
um, restrictions when it came to buying an AR-15, but I was able to, after the federal law changed, um, I was able to purchase greater than 10 round magazines. Uh, then in 2013, that got clamped down and the music stopped, the musical chairs stopped, and everything I had, I could keep having, but couldn't go forward. Then 2018, they said you have to change how you're storing your firearms, which to be totally honest, I agree with that. I agree with all of the things they're doing. I don't think it should be done legislatively, but I agree with the philosophy of keeping your guns locked up 100% if there are people in your household who cannot access them. If you're leaving your house for a while, even if there aren't people in your household who are restricted from having those, um, you should lock up your guns because if someone breaks into your home for whatever reason and they find a gun on your nightside table, they can grab it, they can steal it, they can go do a crime. I actually agree with the philosophy behind the law. I don't agree with the law itself as being a law. That said, they restricted that. Now 2023 comes around and they restrict even further closing loopholes and saying all these others and everything has to be whatever. And now there's more legal uh, restrictions on FFLs. There's the restriction on open carry, which is you are not allowed to do it anymore. Which, by the way, I've only ever seen two people open carrying in my entire time in Connecticut. Which is fine. I mean, not not talking about protests like CCDL protests or something. Um, or open carry groups. I'm talking about in, in public, like at the grocery store. Uh, that said, when it comes to firearms, when it comes to restrictions... I'm sure they are going to keep pushing. I have zero confidence that things are going to get easier from here, that legal action is going to work and push things in, in the right direction. I think the opposite. I think they're going to keep pushing the wall. I think at some point they're going to say uh, legally comp, uh, confiscate or destroy or move out of state. You can still possess them, but they can't be in the state anymore. Uh, magazines, receivers, things like that. I, I have a feeling they're going to do that or pay a certain tax or have some kind of liability insurance if you have these certain items, whatever. I think they're going to keep pushing whatever they can do because they're not content with this. So what can you do? Get really good with firearms, specifically shotguns, pump action shotguns, I think are some of the last things that are going to go. Um, get really good with semi-automatic shotguns. Those, in some configurations, are assault weapons in the state, but in many configurations, like a Breda 1301 Tactical is still kosher in the state of Connecticut, as far as I know. Um, go for something like that. Go for a uh, Mossberg 940, or, uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan, you guys know, of the Mossberg 500 series or 590. Those are great firearms. They're pump action. Um, the Remington 870 is pretty good if you can find one uh, that's been through the, the quality checklist. Those are really good firearms, especially the used ones. Um, kind of pricey nowadays, but they're there. Uh, and if you're not a fan of shotguns because of recoil, 20 gauge, by the way, is fantastic. But if you're not a fan of shotguns, uh, handguns are still very effective. You can still buy a Glock 17, even though it's restricted to 10 rounds. I think um, a new shooter or someone who's not as comfortable as recoil, get them a Glock 17 or a full-size CZ 75 or something. Um, you should be fine with that if, if you're willing to learn a handgun. Don't let someone at a gun store convince you that the small you know, Charter Arms pink revolver 380 special is a good gun for, for a woman because it's pink. That's ridiculous. Get a 380, get a 9mm. The bigger it is, the easier it is to shoot. If you want a handgun, go for that. I would recommend a long gun, uh, and there are many options other than uh, AR-15s. That said, there's a reason the AR-15 is so popular as a, as a platform, and lower receiver being the platform, I don't like the terminology platform anyway. 
there's a reason the AR-15 is so popular, and yeah, it's it's a shame that it's no longer legal in the state. Anyway, rant over. If you guys have the opportunity um, to get some training, that will go a long way. I don't care if you have, you know, something like um, a bolt action rifle even a, like a Ruger Gunsight Scout or something, those are incredibly effective in the hands of someone who knows how to use them. 10 round magazine, 308, 16 inch barrel. It's gonna be blasty as hell, but it'll be effective. Hey guys, I know this has been a long video and it's all been me in the car, uh, but anyway, I appreciate you sticking with it. Stay safe out there, everyone. And uh, do what you can to join the good organizations in the state and federally that are helping to protect your rights because they keep coming for them. I don't know if you saw the news, but Gavin Newstrom's trying to get a 28th Amendment, which is going to be um, essentially a new constitutional amendment for gun control. Uh, yeah, screw you, Newsom. See ya.